Hi folks, I'm Vikraman. Uh, this lecture is the part 2 of uh, learning convolutional neural networks. In the previous lecture, I described uh, about the uh, basics of a convolutional operation and uh, how we apply a convolutional operation to different types of data. In this lecture, I'm going to focus on two major uh, layers that constitute a convolutional neural network, namely the activation layer and the pooling layer. I'm going to start off by discussing uh, what is an activation layer and in particular I'm going to focus on rectified linear units and its uh, variance. Followed by I'm going to discuss about uh, the significance of uh, pooling layer in uh, deep networks. So uh, let's get started. Deep neural networks uh, deploy a lot of uh, nonlinear transformations but uh, the important uh, operation which is the convolutional operation is linear in nature. So how do we uh, deploy uh, nonlinearity uh, in uh, deep networks? That's through activation functions. So activation functions are inspired from uh, human brain system. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, different types of activation functions and uh, I described briefly about uh, the activation functions in earlier lectures. So I would like to revisit uh, the standard uh, uh, activation functions that has been uh, used for several years in neural networks. The first uh, activation function that has been uh, used uh, widely in earlier decades were uh, sigmoid and the second one is stand hyperbolic. Uh, you can see the value of these two saturates beyond uh, some point and the value is limited between uh, uh, 0 and 1 in case of sigmoid and uh, minus 1 to plus 1 in case of tan hyperbolic. Here are some of the widely used activation functions. Rectified linear unit, uh, p relu, parametric uh, relu, leaky relu and exponential linear units. Relu, rectified linear unit. Rectified uh, linear units uh, revolutionized uh, deep learning in the sense that uh, it overcame all the disadvantages of uh, tan hyperbolic and uh, sigmoid activation functions that have been uh, in use for several years in neural networks. Uh, in addition, uh, the computational cost and uh, the uh, convergence rate are all much faster uh, with the ReLUs. Uh, since we have uh, millions of parameters and uh, lots of computational in uh, deep neural networks, uh, the ReLUs came in really handy. So let's have a look at how uh, a ReLU function looks and uh, let's see its properties. This is how a ReLU function looks. Uh, we have a function uh, in the negative part it's uh, 0 and uh, in the positive part it's uh, just uh, simply the value of the input itself. So uh, the derivative of this function is also pretty straightforward. It's uh, 1 for uh, positive values and uh, 0 for negative values. The properties of ReLU are faster convergence, faster computation at a minimal cost. Uh, it removes the vanishing gradient and uh, non-saturating uh, problems and uh, its value ranges from 0 to infinity. This is the plot of a standard uh, tan hyperbolic function. You can see that uh, for values much uh, lesser than uh, zero, uh, the value saturates to minus one and the value is much greater than zero, it saturates to plus one. And also at these places, since the value is constant, uh, the gradient will be zero and the network won't learn anything. So these two are the prominent problems of uh, sigmoid and uh, tan hyperbolic function. Uh, the uh, gradient vanishes after a certain point and uh, the value also saturates between these two points. ReLU was able to remove these two key problems uh, that uh, hindered the progress of uh, neural networks and uh, that was why it was very popular and uh, it is one of the widely used uh, activation functions. Now moving on, uh, there have been a uh, few of the uh, variants of this uh, uh, rectified linear units and uh, I would like to discuss with you. P ReLU, parametric ReLU. It basically modifies the negative uh, values of the input. So instead of having a plain flat zero, we have a small amount of output uh, in that uh, we introduce a small slope. Uh, it's again a 
a straight uh, line uh, but uh, with a uh, very little slope uh, uh, with uh, the slope uh, being a learnable parameter here in this case it's alpha and uh, alpha is uh, uh, learnable during uh, the training meaning that when you're training so this becomes an additional parameter which uh, would be understood and uh, learned by the network some of the key parameters of PRELU is it has a non-zero slope everywhere and a slope is a parameter for learning and uh, it has a slightly increased performance with the ReLU at a slightly increased computational cost and uh, mean value of the output shifts towards zero. What do you mean by shifting the mean output value towards uh, zero and uh, what is its significance? Basically, if you want a smooth converging rate uh, to the minimum, uh, you need uh, uh, the output values to be centered around uh, a mean with uh, value zero, close to zero. So in case of ReLU, the uh, values are either positive or zero. So the mean will be away from zero. But in case of PRELU and other activation functions will be, I will be discussing shortly, uh, you have both uh, negative values also included and the positive values. So the mean is shifted or uh, oriented towards zero, which is uh, really helpful so that the output values are more or less uh, centered around zero. So it's really helpful. Leaky ReLU is a special case of uh, parametric ReLU in that uh, instead of having a learnable parameter for slope, we have a constant value of slope for the negative values of input, which is alpha, and it's uh, generally uh, encoded with the value of 0.1. The advantages of this over P ReLU is uh, that we don't have much additional uh, computational cost and uh, it's more or less at the same computational cost as that of uh, plain ReLU. And uh, researchers have claimed to have uh, a better performance uh, than ReLU's. Moving on, uh, we have exponential linear unit. Uh, uh, it uh, quite resembles uh, ReLU in the positive input space and for the negative input space as the name suggests we have a small exponentially decaying part and uh, the function goes like this. Uh, so in the positive uh, region it's just uh, x and uh, the negative uh, region we have alpha and uh, multiplied by a small exponential part. And uh, the derivative is also simple and straightforward. Uh, the positive region it's one uh, similar to ReLU and for the negative region we have uh, uh, just the input plus the constant alpha. Two of the key features of uh, exponential linear unit is that uh, it encodes invariance and uh, it saturates to a value of minus one for val larger val negative values but by doing so it ensures decreased variance and only carries relevant information to the next layer. So how do you uh, think the uh, exponential linear unit uh, ensures uh, invariance and uh, noise robustness? Basically what you have is uh, saturating value uh, to minus 1 for uh, high uh, negative values. So uh, these high negative values are generally noise and uh, because of this uh, uh, it uh, squashes them and uh, we have uh, our, uh, uh, output which is uh, invariant and uh, which is uh, really good for uh, deep learning because all the deep learning uh, networks are uh, invariant to translation and uh, to invariant to noise. So in this way, uh, ELUs are really powerful. This is all about activation functions. Uh, uh, in order to have a better understanding about uh, different activation functions and the advantages and, and disadvantages of uh, every activation function, I've created a nice table for you. So let's look into that. This is the nice ta table for comparison for different activation fun functions I have created for you. So starting off with the tan hyperbolic function, the ranges between uh, minus 1 to 1, uh, we have a problem of saturation, the computational cost is high, the gradient is vanishing, and uh, but uh, since the uh, we have both negative and positive values, the output uh, is more or less likely to be centered around uh, 0, it uh, doesn't encode invariance. All the same properties uh, goes to sigmoid also, but uh, with sigmoid the range is restricted between 0 to 1 and uh, because of this we don't uh, have a 0 centered mean output. Uh, moving on to ReLU, the most popular uh, uh, 
activation function which uh, revolutionized deep learning uh, the ranges from uh, 0 to infinity uh, we don't have a problem saturation the computational cost is minimal the gradient doesn't vanish uh, but since uh, we have only positive 0 and positive values the we have uh, the output is not centered around zero and it doesn't encode invariance. Uh, ReLU, it's uh, just a slight advancement of um, uh, uh, P ReLU is a slight advancement of ReLU. Uh, here uh, uh, the range is from minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, uh, the good part is we have a zero centered mean output but uh, uh, at the cost of uh, minimal extra computational uh, cost. And uh, re leaky ReLU is just a special case of P-ReLU. Uh, we have a uh, minimal uh, uh, extra computation cost, but uh, lesser than P-ReLU. The most powerful activation function, uh, which is uh, being widely used now, is uh, exponential linear unit. Uh, the range is from minus 1 to infinity. Uh, the same properties go with uh, ReLU, but uh, uh, it encodes invariance and at the same time we have a nice zero-centered mean. You can uh, pass the video and uh, move some uh, few frames back and uh, revisit the table. Uh, so take a minute or two to understand uh, the functions and advantages and disadvantages with uh, every activation function. So this is all about activation functions. Uh, moving on, uh, we have a pooling layer. It is another important layer for deep neural networks. So let's look into it. One of the central ideas about uh, deep learning philosophy is to downsample the input uh, data and increase the dimensions in the depth. That means uh, increase the number of future maps but uh, downsample the input data size. The key functions of uh, the pooling layer is to downsample the data. Uh, uh, by doing so, it summarizes uh, the local uh, data to a single data point in the output space. And uh, also it uh, encodes a lot of uh, degree of invariance uh, with respect to translation and elastic distortions. Two types of uh, commonly used pooling layers are the max pooling layer and average pooling layer. Let's look into max pooling layer. Suppose uh, we have our output from the activation function and uh, uh, this is the sliding window. Uh, I have a sliding window of uh, 2 comma 2 and uh, basically this sliding window uh, 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 captures the maximum of uh, this particular uh, matrix and here it's phi and outputs into a separate matrix. By doing so it captures the uh, essential information and discards the uh, unwanted uh, noise. Uh, by doing also uh, uh, if there are some uh, translations of the data point it still captures the essential information and uh, it makes the network uh, robust and uh, translation invariant. Uh, this is all about max pooling 2D. Uh, we have a 2 comma 2 uh, matrix uh, which uh, slides around uh, the uh, future maps and uh, selects the highest value in that particular matrix. Uh, in case of average pooling layer, uh, we have the same uh, 2 comma 2 uh, matrix or uh, you can choose a higher dimensional matrix, square matrix basically. and. Uh, you can uh, it uh, sums up the uh, value of all the uh, points in that uh, particular matrix and takes the average of them. So uh, essentially, you have all the information encoded in a single point. By doing so, uh, it uh, drastically reduces the uh, size of the data, and uh, so this is all about downsampling. And uh, also, instead of uh, stacked uh, uh, data uh, sets, we have a uh, down sample data and uh, deeper data. Finally, I would like to show you an uh, example of uh, uh, this uh, convolutional uh, activation and the pooling layer in action and let's see how the data is down sampled. So I'm defining a single convolutional layer and just uh, using uh, Keras uh, framework for time being. Uh, so, I'm just adding a single convolutional layer, convolutional 2D operation. Uh, 
uh, where I have uh, 32 feature maps uh, with uh, kernel size of 3 comma 3 I'm uh, keeping the padding as same okay so and my input shape is of uh, 32 into 32 comma 3 it's basically an RGB uh, image with uh, dimensions 32 into 32 and uh, the, the three channels I'm adding an uh, activation function uh, relu followed by the convolutional operation and I'm also adding a pooling layer max pooling 2d uh, 2 comma 2 okay so let's see how our um, output is affected so we have uh, after the first convolutional uh, we have the size of 32 into 32 because uh, since I have uh, declared uh, same padding output uh, so it remains the same 32 into 32 and uh, instead of uh, 3 uh, channels we have 32 channels because I have given the output uh, uh, channel to be uh, feature map size to be 32 so we have uh, 32 over here and uh, activation it's just a mathematical operation and uh, more importantly the pooling layer so i've given max pooling 2 across 2 so the output uh, would be halved so uh, we have 32 into 32 this uh, dimension is uh, reduced to 16 cross 16 but i will still have 32 future maps because that's what i uh, need and i have uh, defined this brings us to the end of the uh, lecture about uh, activation function and pooling layer uh, the second part of convolutional neural network series and uh, the next part is going to be about uh, visualizing uh, convolutional uh, network uh, basically the visualizing the weights and uh, it's a very important lecture so uh, i hope you guys have uh, enjoyed and uh, importantly understood them uh, please uh, feel free to hit any questions and if you enjoyed my uh, lecture please be sure to subscribe them and I would uh, encourage you to uh, read some of the papers especially uh, exponential linear unit and uh, some of the papers I have uh, included them uh, the links in the description below so have a nice day thank you